All right, so I'm going to demo the thigh dressing for complex wound. I'm um, sorry about the quality. I record all of these videos on my own, so um, just bear with me. The dressing for the abdomen and the thigh are um, basically identical, except when you're packing the abdomen, you'll use two 4x4 four four gauze, and when you're packing the thigh, you use one. And then the thigh, you're going to use a lot of so first thing I did was review my position's orders. I saw that we're doing the thigh, so I'm going to introduce myself to Ms. Hurt and let her know what I'm going to be doing. Um, I'll be setting up a sterile field here next to her leg so she can remain as still as possible um, so that I can do the procedure. I asked her if she had any pain and I medicated her because sometimes deep, breathe, uh, deep breathing and packing these wounds can be difficult. So I did that an hour ago and I've come back is manageable. So I want to gather my supplies for my cart, which I already have, and then I'm going to kind of prep my area. As best I can. Okay, taping my biohazard bag to the outside of my table moving my trash can close to me if I need it. Now that I did that, I'm going to go wash my hands because I've been touching my biohazard bag and my trash can. So I've gone, washed my hands, come back, I've identified my patient, explained their procedure, introduced myself, um, moved my table, waist high, my patient bed. You can move this rail if you need to. I don't feel that I need to um, for the stomach or the chest. Um, for other dressings, you may need to do that. Place my waterproof pad. And I'm going to open my Q-tips. There is an area where you pull down. You don't want to open the cotton part. You want to open the stem. And pull it down a good amount. And then I'm going to tape this so that I have access. I like them on the side of my table. I've seen students tape them lengthwise, laying flat on the table. So my first pair of gloves. I have three pair of disposable gloves. I think the checkoff on my calls for two, um, just personal habit, I use three. So same as clean dressing. practice, you want to save these abdominal pads so don't curl the tape under so that you can pull it off easily and reuse it. For check off, you can. So I want to remove as much as possible. Alright, so my uh, packing came out with my dressing when I grabbed it. You can see that I've got serosanguinous um, on my packing gauze and about 10% my outer 4x4s, nothing on my ABD pad. This one looks good, we've got some redness, uh, beefy, um, no necrotic areas, and I'm not seeing any tunneling or anything, so we have a healthy looking one. Uh, no smell. Um, so at this point I'm going to palpate, just like you did on clean dressing. So top to bottom. I know everyone says clean to dirty, that's different here, but everything is top to bottom. Clean is the head, dirty is the foot. And then I'm going to wipe that up and double glove for trash. Alright, so I have my measuring device. Um, you'll have paper copies of 
this for checkoff, you'll have this part. You need to measure and measure. So that's why I have my two Q-tips. I want to limit exposure of these Q-tips as much as possible. So hold it at the end, and I'm not going over my wound, I'm going to the side of the wound. So I can go to that side or this side. Just my finger working, the length. is not crossing that wound. So you do the length first because I have not touched any portion of the Q-tip here so that when I'm going over there's no dirty Q-tip going over the wound. So then my width, always length and width, three, all the way. And my new Q-tip for tunneling, check for tunneling and depth. So tunneling, I'm just going to poke at the sides. Again, I am not over this wound, I'm to the side of the wound. And then for depth, stick all the way to the bottom, and go down. And measure. Okay. You can write those numbers down if you need to. I'll go to the side. Now we're going to get ready for our dressing change. So the first thing we want to do is and everything. So what I have, I have sterile gloves, my ABD pad, um, we're not going to open that till the end, so put it off to the side, and tape, two more packs of cotton tip applicators, 30 ml syringe, sterile water, expiration date 6 2018, and then my 4 by 4 gauze pack. So I'm going to loosen everything. So just turn the catheter, don't open it all the way. Same thing with these. Um, hook it in that way. Bottle of water. And my gauze pack. I'm going to open all the way around the edge, but I'm not going to expose that gauze at all. And some students that I've seen in the past, they just open one or two sides and then they really struggle once they've got their sterile glove on getting the rest of the pack open. So I recommend opening all four sides. These, this is all about setup. If you prepare for the procedure, you're not going to have any issues during the procedure. If you try to rush through the preparation, you're going to struggle. Now, as you can see how I have my table positioned, I have eyes on my what's going to be my sterile field and my sterile wound at all times. Not truly sterile, but all in the sterile. All right, I have to put these on. And my table's high enough that I'm um, not dropping my hands for anything. Again, do not touch these, because you're going to be using sterile gloves to pull these out. And there's a reason I'm doing it over here and not underneath me because, again, the inside of this package is sterile, so I don't want to be reaching over it for any reason. So your glove pack is going to become your sterile field. So make sure you're opening it all the way because you don't want it flopping around. Okay. So I'm going to get one of my gloves on, it doesn't matter, um, I've heard, I think dominant is usually the preferred. So grab the inside, put it on just like we did in sterile field. 
I like to hang my fingers down so that they're not draping over my hand. Let me pull this cup. Now's the tricky part. We're working sterile and non-sterile. So this is sterile, this is non-sterile. So I've got to get all my stuff out. Um, I'm going to start from the easiest, or I guess smallest. Um, so this I unscrewed earlier. Slide your pink cap off. Cap off. This clear part is sterile, so I'm touching the clear part and pulling the other cap off, the clear cap off, putting that on my sterile filter. Same with my sur um, syringe. I'm going to pop the cap off. I'm not touching anything on the inside. Uh, taking my, the top off of my 4x4 gauze. Scoot that over closer to my sterile field, pull all of my gauze out. Move this around. And then I'm not crossing, now this is a sterile field, I'm not going to cross it and I'm not going to cross that. So now I need my sterile water with my expiration date in my gauze tub. For me, once the wound is covered, you do not ha um, have to have be sterile to put on your ABD pad, so that's why I do not open my ABD, ABD pad until the end or abdominal pad. Um, it's kind of up to you. And then my Q-tips. So I'm grabbing and pulling up. sterile gloves we were taught a few weeks ago. Have it inside the cup. Make sure your thumb and your pinky, whatever the fingers are out of the cup, are not going to touch anything. And put it down. Okay? So now we are ready to begin. And 30 ml syringe. Take the pink catheter, the pink catheter's plastic, off of my needle. Put your needle back down on your sterile field. You're going to be throwing this in sharps afterwards. If you do not throw this in sharps, you are not successful at this checkoff. All sharps go in sharps. Please do not let these end up in my trash cans. Put my catheter on my syringe. I'm going to irrigate my wound. Wick. So everyone does this a little different. You can take the 4x4 gauze and go directly down, but this cannot touch the outside of your wound. So I like to fold it so it's a little stiff. And make sure your gloves do not touch the skin of your wound. And this is wicking any excess water that's down in your wound. Okay? And pull out. We're not rubbing anything around. We just go straight down and pull out. So we look nice and dry there. And I'm going to clean the outside of the wound, same way you did for the dressing. Get my little wonton. Again, I'm wearing sterile gloves, so I don't have to be as careful. I just have to make sure I don't touch the skin while I'm doing this. Hands always up. Please, please, please do not drop your hands in a lot of checkoffs and rechecks. I'm reminding you guys to keep your hands. to dry it. Top to bottom always. And we're crossing the wound. Right. Everybody's favorite part, packing. So the thigh, I'm going to use one 4x4. Four four. For the abdomen, you use two. Do one at a time. So unfold it. Just fold it in three. Get in the water. You don't want it dripping wet, but you want it saturated. Now I'm right-handed, so I like to control with my right hand, so I kind of curl it up around my finger. And I'm going to use my Q-tip to guide this into my wound. 
with your packing, you don't want the packing to touch the outer wound. You just want it to go inside. So your goal is to hit the red with your packing. Packing can pile high on top. You can stand up tall and poofy, but it can't go out of the edge. So we're coloring inside the lines. Not away. No cover. No touch technique, just like I did for clean dressing. Now my wound's covered. We're good to go. I don't need to be sterile anymore. I'm going to open my ABD pad.